1953 Nardi 750 with body by Frua. It's a very clean, simple design. It's a race car, but it was also designed to be a show car. It went to the 1953 New York Auto Show. Nardi had a new distributor, a very influential guy, Wacky Arnold, and he had asked them to build him a car that he could take to the New York Auto Show. And this is what they designed. There are three very charming photos of this car taken just before it left Italy for New York. The car was brand new, a fine example of Italian craftsmanship, a proven racing chassis with stylized body by Frua. In Italy, these little sports cars are often referred to as barchetta. The direct translation is little boat. And you can see why. It looks a little like a boat. For Nardi, it must have been a proud moment, sending off their latest design to the New York Auto Show. Enrico Nardi was the founder and principal of Nardi & Company. He had started his career at Lancia, and he quickly became advisor to the head of the company, Vincenzo Lancia. By 1937, he was working for Enzo Ferrari as his chief test driver. Enrico Nardi was a race car driver and an engineer, a valuable combination. As a race car driver, he knew how to drive fast, and as an engineer, if something was wrong, he could tell you what it was. Enrico Nardi raced for Ferrari in the 1940 Mille Miglia, the 1,000 mile race around Italy. In fact, Nardi had raced the Mille Miglia every year from 1935 until 1940. Nardi was a man of strong opinions, well respected by his peers. Enzo Ferrari, a friend, would occasionally come to lunch on Sunday. Ferrari was often late, and after waiting 10 minutes, Nardi would encourage his family to start eating. He would wait no more. If you were late, there was a chance you would go hungry. By 1947, Nardi was ready to start his own company. They produced speed equipment, intake manifolds, exhausts, gear shift assemblies, and steering wheels. Nardi would eventually become most famous for his steering wheel designs. One of Nardi's goals was to build his own race cars, fast, stylish, nimble. Often they were small in stature, but very competitive on the track. The first race car chassis was the 750, the same design that our car is built on. Small diameter tubes, triangulated to give strength and light weight. Typically they used Fiat front and rear suspension with power coming from a BMW 750cc motorcycle engine. They made only four cars with this Frua body design. The first was probably BMW engined, and the next had a French Panard two-cylinder 750cc engine. The third was ours, the Crosley engine car built for the New York Auto Show. Crosley engines were doing very well racing in America, so this engine was a logical choice for a race car destined for the American market. After the success of the New York Auto Show, our Barchetta went back to the Arnold headquarters in Warsaw, Indiana. Wacky Arnold raced the car himself several times during the summer of 1953. By 1955, it was on display at the Henry Ford Museum. During the 1960s, it turned up for sale in Road and Track and other publications. By the 1970s, it had settled in a trailer park in Scotts Valley, California. An enthusiast from Reading, California purchased it, and a few years ago, I purchased the car from him. We're lucky to have some good photos of the sister car, the next Crosley powered car at the Paris Auto Show. These photos show the car being unloaded and on the stand. It appears that the car was towed on a small open trailer behind a small Fiat sedan from Italy. 
unthinkable today. Period photos of these cars when they were new and before anyone had a chance to alter anything are invaluable. When restoring, these photos help us get the details right. So let's, let's take a look and see what, it'll, see what it'll take to restore the car. Probably the most distinctive part is the grille. It's a Frua design. In the early 50s, if you look at other Fruas, you'll see a headlight in the center. It has Marshall lamps, the headlight and the running light. The turn signals are built into the grill. These will become important in a few minutes. On top of the grill, there should be a little vent up here. We have the vent. Um, when they were racing, for some reason, they removed it. And there's also a badge that goes on top of the vent. We have that as well. Looking down the side of the vehicle, you can see how sleek it is. No exterior door handles. No, no door glass. The vehicle has no convertible top frame. It was designed to be a race car, but also designed to be a show car. So it's a little flashy, but very sleek, very clean design. It has the most minimal windshield, just a little plexiglass windshield. Really, it works very, very well. Lovely balanced, lovely balanced little car. The way that the cockpit is finished is something that you'll see in Ferraris from the late 40s, early 50s this leather bound piece around the opening. I believe it's a touring design, probably something that Frua was copying from them. Everybody, as they do today, everybody was borrowing from everyone else. But still, it's just a lovely way to, to trim out and finish the cockpit opening. Um, standard, you know, race car gas cap, um, quick release to, to fill it up and then get straight back onto the track. Um, but of course, with a little bit of flair, they've put their own chrome escutcheon on the bottom just to sort of dress it up a little bit. The, the tail of the vehicle, there are a couple of things that need to be resolved here. Um, these are just added, so these are not original. Uh, there's a pair of brake lights that sit on top of the rear fenders, and we have them. We also have the base that they sit on, so those need to be reincorporated into the tail. License plate light is original and there should be a pair of turn signal lamps um, just below the brake lights. We don't have those, but what we do have are the turn signal lights on the front, and when we look at the old photos, we can see that the tail lights, uh, the turn signal lights on the tail, are the same as the ones in the grill. So we at least know what we're looking for, and if we have to have them made, we have something we can copy, which is really great. So very stylish, light, lovely car. Lovely car. The chassis is original. It's Nardi's 750 racing chassis design. It's quite different from other chassis from the period. Normally in this period, in the early 50s, the frames were two, predominantly two large tubes with cross members and outriggers. And Nardi has done something different. He has smaller tubes triangulated to give strength, rigidity, and lightweight. So it's, it's a rather a unique design, um, distinctly Nardi. It's not like anything else of the period. The rear axle, it's set up the same as a Bugatti rear axle from the 1930s. It's a Fiat axle, but the way that they have it suspended is the same as the Bugatti. Uh, rear quarter elliptic springs. So Nardi, when he wanted something you know, to work and to work better, he was happy to create his own design. But when he saw something that worked, he was okay borrowing it. Our frame has had a couple of small modifications. Uh, there are two tubes, uh, one each side that go under the rear axle. Um, and at some point when the car was racing, those tubes were removed, probably in order to change the rear axle. They need to be reincorporated. Uh, and then there are two tubes alongside the transmission, and they have been moved to a slightly wider position, probably to facilitate a different transmission being uh, fitted at some point, but they need to be corrected. And up in the uh, driver's front corner, there are three or four tubes that are showing cracks and some welds. The steering box mounts on one, the lower suspension on the driver's side mount on the others, and just the stresses and strains over time, there's some cracks and some welding, so those are gonna to need to be repaired. Otherwise, the chassis uh, 
original and correct. Thankfully, the interior has the original steering wheel and all the original gauges, switches, and knobs. The dashboard is different. It needs to, it needs to be redone. We've got to get it back to the original configuration. And a quick look at the seats. They appear correct, but they're actually not. They're a later pair of bucket seats. Um, we, we had an original racing seat from another car, and we have good detailed photographs of that seat. Plus, we took a fiberglass mold from it so we can get measurements uh, and have somebody make us a pair of seats which is what's going to be needed to, to make the interior correct again. The mechanicals of the car, the engine, suspension and gearbox, are probably the easiest things to restore. Uh, everything needs to be rebuilt, but it's either Fiat or Crosley, which both of them are inexpensive and plentiful. It is common for race cars to have had engines swapped in between races and we do have a correct Crosley engine, but it is not the matching number engine. Suspension and gearbox are Fiat. Once again, all that stuff is plentiful and inexpensive, so it should be quite simple to have it all rebuilt. We have the original front brakes and a correct set of rear brakes for the car. The brakes that are on the car are a little bit newer, so we need to put the originals back on. So the mechanical restoration is going to be quite simple. The Crosley engine was being raced in America in the 750 class and was very good. So there's large quantities of the engines out there and there are still companies rebuilding them. So having the engine rebuilt is quite simple. We have the original Nardi twin carburetor intake manifold. Um, we have uh, plenty of period speed equipment that came with the Crosley engine dual point distributor and various other parts. So mechanically we have everything we need but it is all going to need to be rebuilt. One of the exciting things about this car is that they only made four of them. Four in this body style. Uh, none have been restored, none have been taken to car shows or seen uh, by the world. So once restored this will be something new and something fresh. Um, Pebble Beach, California. The Concours at Pebble Beach would be a great venue for the car. Or Villa Deste, the Villa Deste Concours on the shores of Lake Cuomo would be a great place to show this car. Another thing that may happen is it may end up participating in the Mille. A lot of the small Barchera from this period race in the Mille Miglia. The heritage of the car goes back to the 1930s. A key Ferrari employee who broke away wanted to do something on his own. Once it's restored, it'll be a piece of Italian design and style which is being brought back to the world. It's going to be exciting.